What is up guys, welcome back to today's Destiny 2 build, with today's showcase focusing on the brand new Tiku's Divination exotic bow, and how you can easily craft a setup that works out really well with Warman cells, and allow you to clear out waves of content easily like many other exotic bows do. The exotic bow has great range, damage and AoE, which pairs really well with Warman cells in general, and something like this is perfect for wave based content such as the battlegrounds or strikes that have an onslaught of enemies. I want to go over how you can maximize your bow around this for the specialized content and for high end game content where you need to knock on a lot of damage in a short time frame before you get swarmed or if you need to clear out a big batch of enemies. The synergy you will get with the new bow and war mines will allow you a lot of customization in terms of what you want to build around your cells and not just simply damage. The bow on its own is very powerful against multi to singular targets but with the added on benefits of mods you can mix this up into a number of ways from simply healing allies on a large scale or debuffing enemies who linger around it for too long. All this and more will be covered in this video with tips as to what is best. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. So for the subclass we will be using a tournament of the sky and combining this with the exotic of choice, the sunbracers. As everything about the build is solar based, it makes the most sense to utilize all items and gear that you can make all my cells from, from all angles, so I don't have to heavily rely on just one area. Now you may be thinking why don't I use the Tumblr of Flame instead as the super is more worthwhile and you have the ability to extend your super upon kills. The issue with the tree as a whole, the super is the only good thing about the subclass which is fine if I was just using that, but the melee and survivability is the main tools that I'll be relying on the most and this subclass just lacks what I need. A Tumblr of Sky Celestial Fire hits hard, tracks and can one shot the majority of enemies at around 7 plus meters at a decent safety, while Igniting Touch can one shot but only if the enemy is already weakened, plus you have to get up close and personal to activate it. A Tumblr of Sky also offers more movability and dodges to which Flame lacks none. This in a PvP setting overall makes the subclass the best to equip as speed equals longer survival. While in PvE, this can be also useful for dodging more aggressive enemies who rely on swarming techniques to catch you out. Another big factor to take note is how the melee for each subclass works for the Sunbracers. Upon activating Sunbracers, you get a 4 second duration of unlimited grenades. Now like I mentioned before, Celestial Fire hits hard and tracks as the best to use when you don't have enough time to reload or if there's a certain enemy taking shots at you that you just can't reach. Igniting Touch requires you to close the gap to do this which is viable, but considering that the build focuses heavily on using distance to your advantage, it doesn't make sense to pair with this build. It's all about which subclass offers the most in terms of benefits towards you at the end of the day. Going with either is fine, but depending on content, it may be best to choose one over the other. For weapons, I'm using the Tuku's Divination as the main primary of the build with Code Duello as a backup solar heavy and then the Heritage as a secondary close core weapon and boost in DPS. The Heritage is a raid shotgun that I would heavily advise players to get because of its unique perk pool and similar damage you can pull off against bosses. My role has Assault Mag for faster RPM, Outlaw for faster reload upon position kills which fits the weapon perfectly as it's a single fire slug shotgun, and Fresh which generates super energy upon kills and useful in this build as I've decided to add some focus into the intellect area. The weapon is fantastic against any type of enemies that have an easy to hit critical area, which is quite a lot, and I can pull off around 20 to 22k per crit with this weapon each time I land a critical hit, which once you add in how many rounds it can hold, makes it one of the best legendary connects to carry and use wherever you go. From looking at Destiny GG in terms of best roles to have, it looks like I have actually got the god role for PvE, but alternatively swapping out the outlaw for reconstruction which slowly reloads your weapon and doubles its capacity seems like a much more powerful role to have for DPS focus activities. But overall, the weapon role is still fantastic with or without the necessary perk. For secondary, I'm using the Tuku's Divination of the Bow that was just released this season and the bow is highly slept on at the moment as to how powerful it really is. The bow has the ability to track, prime and then detonate any enemy that has been hit by the arrow and the explosion it does alone is enough to wipe out areas of ads within a singular hit. This is what made me decide to build around the bow, 
The ability to not only track and explode enemies, but also the ability that you can do this to one tough enemy over and over again, with no cooldown involved. That and the ability to also generate all my cells, which of course makes it even more volatile to use, but in practice and used for PvE and PvP, the bow has a lot of usage when done correctly, and can allow you to trigger a chain reaction of explosions as long as you tag them, which is 95% of the time. For Heavy, I've chosen UD Code Duello Rocket Launcher that has auto loading holster, which is perfect for negating the slow reload speed, and Ambitious Assassin, which will allow us to hold 2 in the tube if we get 2 plus kills. Another fantastic weapon to have, the Rocket Launcher has proven really useful against bosses and adds with the recent Rocket Launcher buff, and is slowly becoming an option for many PvE players to use as an endgame DPS weapon. Although I never got the new Rocket Launcher perk that would have made my role extremely broken, the role I have still makes it extremely perfect for cutting off enemies. One other thing to note, the weapon can also produce Warman cells thanks to it being a solar weapon with a ton of splash damage in it. So if you're having a hard time looking for a heavy to use, then this weapon is a perfect match to go with. Now onto the stats, you want to first make sure your recovery and resilience are at 50 for a healthy and balanced stat for all of endgame content. Next, you want to have the following at 60 if you can, Discipline, Intellect and Strength. These three areas will be the most used stats through the entirety of the build, and with the help of other mods and perks, we can enhance them further. Our Exotic, the Sunbraces Exotic perk, requires us to get a charged mini kill to proc his ability. And to do this, the best method would be to push our stat to 60 to 70, and then utilize the Innovation perk for a reduced mini cooldown upon collecting all the power, Radiant Light mod for a plus 20 in strength, which will reduce the need of needing more focused melee mods, and then using Distribution, which will cover all of our abilities in terms of cooldowns. This should be enough to actively allow you to use your melee more often in solo or team activities, which is what you want. Your discipline now will follow suit in terms of mods, but if you wish to use your grenades more often, then having the impact induction mod can help, as using your melee and causing damage will reduce your grenade cooldown, and also trigger the exotic if you have the charged melee, so both work hand in hand. It's also useful to have the bomber mod as well, which will work in the same way as distribution, but only for grenades. Your internet now won't need any mods except from the actual internet mod if you can't spec enough into them via built-in armor points. I was lucky to get away with this, which freed up my mods that I want to use more freely throughout. The fresh mod on top of the 60 stat level will be enough to get your super within a few kills and back to back if you heavily deviate into this area. Adding the Ashes Acid mod, which is solar, will pair wonderfully for the build in mind as the mod relies on grenade kills for more super energy. So when you add two and two together, you can create a build that will not only have unlimited grenades and mini at your disposal, but also a much higher rate of using your super in PvE or even strictly PvP. Everything here will now provide the best experience in terms of enhancing the main go-to stats. A lot of the armor will rely on solo affinity to pull what I'm aiming for, except for the one arc affinity piece for Radiant Light mod. Now, if you don't have the Radiant Light mod, then I would advise you to invest in just the strength and discipline stat as these two are the most important areas for the entirety of the build. Now, as I've covered a few of the mods we are using but not the rest, here is what we're going to be using entirely. For head, we have Discipline and Burning Cells mod. Arm, we have Strength, Impact Induction, Overload, Bow, and Wrath of Asputin mod. Chest, we have Minor Discipline, Arc Resistance, Concussive Dampener, and Radiant Light mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Innovation, and Radiant Warmind mod. Bond, we have Minor Resilience, Distribution, Bomber, and Global Reach mod. Now, as I explained previously with the build, the build will offer you a fantastic array of abilities and crowd-clearing options for whatever content in mind, and the best way to do this is first understanding how the build works. The combat bow has the ability to tag, track, and launch three individual arrows at three to one targets at once via the weapon's perk, Sacred Flame, to which once tagged, ADSing will cause an explosion on the marked target's end, and depending on how much health that target has, can be done multiple times with no cooldown. This is all done via hipfire and ADSing and understanding this will allow you to make the most out of the build and weapon itself. Each time you hit one or more targets at once with the hipfire arrows, they are primed for a short duration, to which then you have two options. You can either ADS for a more powerful shot that will detonate the prime target and cause a large explosion, or you can carry on hipfire with it, to which your shots will always land a mark. You'll know if a target is primed as they have a fire effect overlaying the whole body. 
However, the hipfire hours do next to no damage and ADSing alone doesn't do that much either. So to get the fullness out of the weapon, you must prime aka hit a target with the hip fired arrows and then ADS against said target to cause a large explosion to occur. So the method is like this. Hip fire, prime a target, ADS, detonate a target, repeat. Just getting into the swing of this will allow you to easily 1-2 all enemies you face and thus create a large explosion that will affect anyone caught within it. Now how this works for warming cells is thanks to the Wrath of Asputin mod that will allow you to generate a cell thanks to the solar explosion of your arrows. This is why it's important to follow the above method as just priming one target in a group of 6 enemies will be enough for you to produce a cell, although this is a bit inconsistent at times. The other mods now will then kick in such as the burning cells will add an extra burn damage to those affected. Rage of the Warmind adds an extra solar damage to those affected by the blast which can lead to more cells being generated and then global reach for the extended range. On top of that we have the sun braces for even more AoE damage and damage over time so now you can clear out bosses areas with one cell, use your bow against said boss for continuous damage over time and add in the ability to have numerous solar grenades available every time you activate it. You now pretty much have a max range crowd control in your hand which is easy to create and fully use in all sorts of content since war mine cells can be switched here and there and war mines are always favoured by the masses. The overall feel of the build is like what most war mine cell builds feel like and that is chaotic but good chaotic. The synergy you have will allow you to stay on top all the time but not only that but also the ability to be a reliable source of support for the much harder contents in game. On its own, it's wonderful and I really recommend you give it a try once you have experimented with everything else. But with one myself, it makes the build a must have for this and then probably the many next seasons are made available. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall 2 content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.